I'm gonna be real with you guys, this video was definitely supposed to come out last week. Little did I know I was about to have the worst week of my life, and yeah, this video got delayed. Therefore, all the references in this video talk about the event as if it didn't already happen, but it did. But the tips are still relevant, so I hope you guys enjoy, and let's dive on in, shall we? What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. We are out here at Magnolia Lynx Disc Golf Course and we are gonna talk today about prepping for your first disc golf event. There are tons of you out there who've been playing casually for a while now and you may be saying, well, Mr. YouTube man, when's it time to sign up for my first event? And the answer is honestly, right now. I'm not playing my first ever event this weekend, but I am playing my first Disc Golf Pro Tour event, the Music City Open. Yes, it's a Silver Series, but my rating isn't phenomenal compared to pros, so it's pretty tough to get into the full-on Elite Series. So I thought while I'm prepping for my first Pro Tour event, why not use these same principles to help get you prepared for your next event? I've got a few talking points I want us to go over, so let's dive in. Oh. I hope the talking points go better than that drive. Now there are two very common pieces of advice that people will give players heading into their first event. The first of which is to make sure that you get out on the course and prepare, practice your lines, your thoughts, and take a lot of notes. And if I'm being honest, I've given that same advice to people, talking about what you wanna write down and go out there and say, here's my game plan for this hole, here's what I'm gonna throw, here's what I'm gonna attack with. And although that's good and great, the first thing that I wanna point out is that all of your prep work doesn't matter because conditions will never be the same. For instance, you can practice in pretty windy conditions and then during the day of the event, it's actually pretty calm, so you're throwing more overstable stuff than you actually practiced with and the lines feel a bit different. But those aren't the only conditions I'm talking about. When you play a practice round, it can come at the end of a work day or at the end of a school day, yet during the day of the actual event, you play it first thing in the morning or you play it and no other work has occurred when you go into the round. So not only are the conditions of the wind changing, but also your physical exhaustion conditions have changed. And that's super important to note because when we're exhausted, we're going to play a bit different. I'm not trying to tell you your prep work doesn't matter and that you shouldn't do it, but we need to understand that what actually happens during the round is going to be different than what we practiced. And that fact is true no matter how good or efficient our practice is. Once again, I've given the advice before and I stand behind that you should have somewhat of a game plan going into the round, but things are going to be different and we need to know that. One of the biggest things that changes for people is that during a competitive round or an event, there is a mental shift that happens. So we're not just playing a casual round with friends, but there's a little bit of something on the line. There are 120 people in my division this weekend, and I think I've collectively played with about 10 to 15 of them in a round before. So that means the vibe of the card's gonna be different. And also I'm playing in my first Pro Tour event, which is going to put pressure on me that I've never felt before. I don't know how I'm gonna react in that situation because I've never been in that situation. Which takes us to the second common tip that people give players playing in their first event. The most common piece of advice I hear people give players playing in their first event is to walk in with no expectations. And if I'm being 100% honest, I don't know that I could disagree more with that statement. I understand why people say it because you don't wanna walk into the event with this burden of expectations being too heavy to crush you and distract you from playing in your first actual event. But if I'm being 100% honest, I think that's lazy and a coward's approach to stepping into your first event. I think as a society at large, we've actually gotten a little soft when it comes to setting expectations and dealing with disappointment. I have no problem with you setting a high bar of what you want to achieve during your first event. Because if you meet those expectations, then fantastic, you've done a great job. And if you don't meet those expectations, well, you've given yourself a fantastic learning experience that you could only learn stepping into that critical moment. So I'm gonna give you the advice that you need to set an expectation. While prepping for this video, I looked up a a lot of quotes about expectations and one of the ones that jumped out to me I suffer from my interactions with others because they do not meet the expectations that I didn't know that I had if we don't set those expectations walking into an event it's very easy to be disappointed because how do we judge whether the event was a success or not so here are three expectations I think you can set for yourself that are originally vague but you can kind of shape to fit you more personally first I want to make sure that my time spent playing was worth it most events take place on a weekend where you could be doing a host 
host of other things. And so if you tell yourself at the end of the event, I really wish I would have been doing this instead, then it probably wasn't a good use of your time. And people can fail to meet that expectation even when they win the event. Trust me. The second expectation is that I want to play golf that I'm actually proud of. I do try to warn people to not set the expectation that they're going to win the first event they play. But if you are a super competitive person, I can imagine that when you step up to competition, you're always telling yourself, why am I going to compete if I don't want to win? I found that shifting the expectation to did I play golf that I'm proud of makes me feel a lot better about not my place on the scoreboard, but my time spent overall, thus helping me fulfill the first expectation even easier. Do I think I can win the Music City Open this weekend? Honestly, no. I don't think that I can. And that's because the gap is actually that big between local pros and touring pros. Which takes me to the third expectation. I want to leave this event better than I found it. I'll never forget the first event I was in where my dad caddied for me. The event was at a course that I really wasn't a fan of and I was having an absolutely horrific round. And it was pretty soon after I got my first sponsor, I wasn't landing putts in the basket, drives were kicking off of trees, and it was overall just a pretty miserable time. But what was worse than the golf was the experience that I made for my card mates. It wasn't until we got in the car afterwards that my dad pointed out to his then 28 year old son how embarrassing that was and he wasn't talking about my play. It was from that moment on that I changed my mentality of how I approached events in general. I have definitely had some bad rounds since then, including a moment where I was playing in 40 to 50 mile an hour wins at the NAD DGT championships where we literally witnessed trees get pulled out of the ground. But my expectation is to leave the event better than I found it. And it created some really great moments to just laugh together because what else can you do in the middle of something like that? So whether you make lead card or the last card in your division, remember that there's something more to be said about what you're doing there that day that's going to go far beyond just one singular round. Now that's a lot of mental and honestly life coaching. So let's talk about a few practical things as well. My third tip heading into your first event is to make sure that you not only know your strengths, but you exploit them. And one of my biggest strengths is that I throw really far. Yeah, that hole's like 600 feet out there, not like 300, no. Why would you ever think that? But honestly, I know that my overall distance and my tee shots are the weaker part of my game. For me, my chance to shine is on up shots and putting. When you play in your first event, you're going to see lines and options from players playing those courses that you may or may not have seen before. But you need to know what you can do and what the strengths of your game are, and you need to stick to them and highlight them as much as possible. We've talked about how expectations can hold us back when we don't set the right ones, and one of the biggest places that we feel the weight of expectations is when we bring other people into the equation, especially those individuals who are not uh, you. That's right, you're the only one that can play your scorecard. I was honestly hesitant to even say in this video that I'm going out and playing my first Pro Tour event. But the reality is that even if I let people know or not, I still receive messages after every single sanctioned or rated round I play of people popping into my DMs telling me how garbage I am at this game and that I'm not qualified to teach anyone out there on the internet how to get better because I'm so bad at playing the game myself. Which honestly, some days they're not wrong. I don't play great golf all the time and I've never advertised being the best in the world. But you know, it is what it is. Y'all, I'm gonna be real with you. Disc golf is not easy, and anyone that's trying to convince you otherwise is either lying to you or isn't telling you about all the hard work and practice they've had to put in to make it look or feel easy. So bringing other people who aren't you into the equation to be thinking about them while you're trying to throw these hard or technical shots only sets us up for failure, especially when you find yourself in a new environment that you're playing an event for the first time. So if you're worried about people's perception of you after a round, those probably aren't great people that you need to have in your life. And you're you're welcome to use the same response that I give the lamos who try to heckle me. Never let them see you sweat. So my name's Robbie Crawford, PDGA number 128799. You can look me up in the event this weekend and follow along if you so choose, because honestly, the last tip of this video has been the hardest one for me to learn this week, but it really settled for me yesterday. At the end of the day, you just have to have fun. We are playing a game. I've said it already, disc golf is not easy. It is a sport, but at its core, we are out here in the open or the woods with hopefully a great group of people throwing plastic through the air. I am a local pro at best, stepping onto the same stage as some of the best in our game. And for those of you stepping into your first event, you are a casual player transitioning into the arena of probably experienced players who are used to that pressure of playing in tournament. And I totally get it because I'm crazy competitive myself. So hearing the phrase, oh, just have fun, 
can feel a little off-putting sometimes. But stepping into your first event, you're probably spending more practice time than ever, and you're probably more in your head than you've ever been before, and that's exactly where I've been this week, prepping for that first Pro Tour event. And honestly, y'all, it has led to some of the worst disc golf that I've ever played. But I'm putting so much pressure on myself that I'm just forgetting to have fun. So I'm gonna head to this event, I'm gonna soak up the fun and just enjoy the moment while I'm there. I wanna close things out with this quote. My expectations are sky low because I'm standing on a mountaintop. Intentionally choosing to make the world a better place for other people, intentionally choosing to enjoy the round regardless of the score, that's the mountaintop that we want disc golf to get to. No matter how low your expectations may feel, you're still in the clouds. It's not easy to step up and play your first event, but I want you to hear me say this, proud of you for taking that next step, and I don't care how the score turns out. If you can be proud of yourself on the other side of the round, then we've accomplished our mission. We're growing the sport together. With all that said, I wanna say thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in. I hope you have an incredible rest of the week, because I know I'm about to. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.